<laughs> and that's all it. All my subscribers that only subscribe to my channel to see web shooter videos. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a Spider-Man Homecoming web shooter pretty much out of cardboard. Everybody put your hands up! Supplies you might need are paper clips, velcro straps, and two rubber bands, ruler, scissors, pliers, razor with parental advisor, duct tape, and not necessarily electrical tape, but black tape, hot glue gun, parental advisory, also advised, cheap pen. Additionally, but not necessarily needed, would be a spring. We'll talk more about this later. You're also gonna need a shoe box, Nike SB. Any other weak skating shoe isn't gonna cut it. Vans, get that stuff out of here. I still love you though. Last thing's a cereal box. If she don't like Fruit Loop, she's not worth it. Babe, I'm breaking up with you. So here's all the supplies you need laid out just in case there's anything that you missed. First thing you're gonna wanna do is go back to school and take some more math classes because there's way too much measuring involved in this thing. Everything but the cereal box, the ruler, and pen can be wiped off of this. But keep the scissors. Let's cut one full flat side out of the box. Cutting things, cutting things, cutting things so things get cut. We're cutting, we're cutting, cutting things so things get cut. But just like pointless kindergarten activities, we're gonna cut this into a shape. We'll measure out a six by six square. And by the way, save that other cardboard for later. We're gonna need it. Make a line at two and a half and three and a half. Now go to the side of your square and make a mark at two inches down on both sides. And let's go down an inch from both marks on both sides. And then these vertical lines should also make some type of attachment. Now I'm gonna use a pencil and connect all these lines. We need to make a curved line from here to here as well as from here to here. But make sure that this first line starts an inch down from where you're beginning. One inch up from here and connecting this one to this well, actually this end, but make sure it's a rounder shape. You know, feel free to give it your own personal touch. Now cut out your whole outer shape. Kind of shaped like a bird, and it's, this part is going to play as the bottom piece that goes under your wrist. Trace out the shape onto the shoebox, then cut it out. See the grain of the cardboard going up and down? Yeah, this is supposed to be this way. Now once you got both pieces cut out, you're going to pull out the hot glue gun, then you're going to stick these two together till they're stuck. Like me after I got married. Roll it up to fit your wrist. Now set in this piece aside, pull out your box of cereal, your ruler, and your scissors. Yo, fruit roll-ups get stuck to the wrapper so much, they should just call them fruit rolls, yep. <laughs> I'm sorry, back to your regular paid program. Cut out one of the edges of your cereal box. Measure out a 3x6 rectangle. Within this 3x6 rectangle, take your ruler, long ways, measure out half an inch, half an inch, full inch, and half an inch again. Also draw out some guidelines. Half an inch down the line, and 1 32nd of an inch on the verticals. This doesn't have to be exact, this is just to make a space bar in between. See, this is all that I mean. Now measuring from this top edge, we're gonna go down to four and a half. Mark another one, down two and a half. We're gonna cut this out with a razor with parental supervision. Begin to fold your piece at these lines that you made. Now we're folding. Folding over, then under, then on the other side again over then under. And lining this up to the very edge, you should see that this mark that you made should meet right at that point. That's where you cut. This point, you're gonna go from that two and a half mark to three. Cut it off. The line from this point to this point on both sides. As simple as just freehanding it and after you just Cut it off. This is the part where it gets tedious. You're going to want to pull out an old piece of your shoebox and cut out the side triangle piece onto the shoebox, trace it out about 15 times, and cut them. Guess it's time to warm this baby up with parental supervision. Now you can just glue and stack, like Lunchables. Kids don't eat glue. Two groups of seven, leaving one left over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> hey, hey, 
Look at that loner kid, he's all by himself. Oh yeah, I was just looking at him. Now cut the loner piece vertically in half. No way, you don't have to do this, you, you monster. I, I have kids. No, no, no. <laughs> Put these two together, but your cut piece in the middle. Should be a tiny gap in between. Picking up this old piece, we glue this on top. Now if your surface sticks out a little bit too much, feel free to cut it off, use sandpaper, or in my case, grip tape. Using more shoebox scraps, cut out nine one by one half inch rectangles. The tenth one should be a one half by one half square. Once they're all cut out, glue seven on top of each other, and then the square on top of those in the middle. To cut your paper clip at two and a half inches. The last two cardboard pieces on both sides of the tape, then we're gonna make small incisions here, 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 and here. With this piece's small incisions, it'll allow you to cut off one side and then wrap easier. Might as well cover the whole thing. Place this old piece back and glue this on top. Whee, look at me, I'm sliding! Flip this piece upside down, then create a piece that fits perfectly right here. But before gluing it on, pop a paper clip size hole through the middle. Then you can glue it on from the sides. Stretch out another paper clip and drive it through the hole that you just made. Once you've made your hole, use your pliers to make a teeny holding bin right at the end. Just like that. Here's where the spring comes in handy. Cut the spring at about two inches with pliers. You might need these kinds of pliers. Glue around this with your old piece and Leave space for that hole that you made. You may need to loosen up this hole, like... I already feel like an idiot, please don't make any sex jokes. Let's just put black tape on the whole thing. Scissors to punch a hole through this corner and this corner. And then... From your wrist piece, from this corner to this corner. Line up these holes and put tape over everything. Starting with duct tape to black tape. See, I left strips of the duct tape just to kind of add my own personal creativity to it. Just emphasize on you guys being creative also and not copy me step by step. Plus, I don't really like how the new web shooters look like Batmobiles on. Next up, taking more scraps from the shoe box, let's make two half inch by half inch squares. And puncture two paper clip sized holes through the middle of each. Just make sure these holes are barely wide enough for your rubber band to fit through. Not the end of the rubber band, at least four times. And do this with both. Give it some tension and tie the knot. And get ready to start pulling. The rubber bands are the reason you don't necessarily need the spring. I just thought it would be cool to have both. So before we go into making the bottom strap part of this web shooter, knowing that a lot of you guys may not like this bulkier version, just know that what you have right now is perfect for the typical pullback and shoot. But for anybody that wants to go the extra mile in making this web shooter one hand operated, I would suggest that you follow these steps beforehand. Well, firstly, making another bottom wrist piece and then stacking about 13 layers of cardboard in the front part of it. Using popsicles, tape, and popsicles, create a platform for a block to fit towards the front and an isosceles triangle to fit towards the middle. If I were to do this again, I'd do it like this to create a flat surface. Using the web shooter, mark the spot that your block would be, then mark the spot that your isosceles triangle thing would be. The front block doesn't necessarily have to be made out of layers of cardboard, it could just be a piece of the pen tube. The right angle up from the isosceles triangle should be about a centimeter. In case you guys don't know what a right angle is, it's just uh, uh. <laughs> I additionally added a pen interior to go through the middle of the back end instead of just the paper clip to go through the bottom, because this is a lot more stable. To make this little slider piece right here, you want to cut out like nine two by two and a half centimeter rectangles, then Facing them horizontally, you want to cut out the middles, creating an eye shape, so just cut out the middles. Like Cut holes in the top plate piece for your isosceles triangle thing and your little block right here to fit through. I had a rubber band wrapped around the top and under the back of the popsicle stick. Then put four holes in all the sides of the eye. In the front right here should be about six layers of half an inch by inch rectangles with holes through the middles. Slide in the rubber band through the bottom holes of the eye, then the bottom holes of the block, then the top holes of the eye. Through that empty slot, you're gonna make a knot between the rubber bands. Trace circles around your pin piece, then cut them out, and then insert holes that fit specifically for the interior of the pin so this holds 
properly. Puncturing two holes through the front of the plate, then sliding a rubber band in and under, you see this is where we have the tension of our trigger. Lastly, I cut out and glued two cereal box strips of cardboard and placed a bottle cap on the end. Then savagely cutting holes through all 13 layers of cardboard, I finally was able to create this strap from old pants that I found and folding them, then gluing them, then putting the velcro on them. For this top piece, two by one and one fourth inch rectangle, you're gonna wanna find your center point, which is right there at one, and go over half an inch, then down half an inch to find that point, and then down another half an inch to find that point. From there, you just connect the line, draw over, do the same thing for the other side, draw over, and then draw down. I took off the tip of the pin interior, put an Allen wrench screw on the tip, and then let hot glue melts on it to give it that look of a web. Then attaching this string from the bottom of the trigger to the middle of our pin interior. Now note, if this paper clip is kind of annoying to pull back, just know that you can always pull back from the top, click, and pin interior, then pull and shoot. Yo, Lego or Nerf better hit me up after this one cause I'm doing what they can do out of cardboard. And with that being said, if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, share this with someone you think would be interested, and please subscribe to this channel for content other than web shooters. Late. Oh. You're still here. We'll exit the video. It's over. Oh, you guys are probably waiting for that <laughs> that after skit that we did like last time with me jumping around like miles. Well, we're not gonna do that this time. <laughs> Have fun with your web shooter. On the other hand, if you're not getting the deep dish, then I am. It's as simple as that. Pineapples, really? I can't believe you just said that. Wait, hello? Hello? Hold on, I need reception. <sighs> um. Hello? 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 Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I gotta get my web shoes. Wait. What is this? Spectacular!